Hey folks, uh, oh, gotta start my music up, uh, today we're listening to the, the smooth, friendly tones of, uh, assuming it starts actually playing, of, uh, Bloodborne. Nice, nice friendly music, you know? Uh, where is my, it's so like the setup for my streams and stuff that Everything would work until I actually start streaming. You want to give it a shot, buddy? Well, uh, maybe I'll close it and reopen it. That's fine. Anywho, so I'm going to be trying to do, to keep my scope tight tonight for this build so that it actually gets done in about... I'm hoping about an hour. Uh, obviously, if I fool around with a media player thing for half an hour, then it's definitely not getting done. Uh, interesting. I think it may have crashed. Let's see. Obviously, for me, I'm going to need to probably still reformat sometime. Let's see, where did my Bloodborne go? Banjo-Kazooie, Battletoads, ooh, Battletoads, that's tempting. No, we'll do Bloodborne. Bloodborne and play. There we go. That's what the doctor ordered. Okay, and then, now that that's set up, I'm gonna lower it a little bit in my headphones. Cause I, as much as I enjoy loud music in general, um, if I do it while talking, I can't think. But if I'm doing it, uh, is that, oh, okay, we'll close that, yeah. Seems like, anyways, if I do it while talking, then I can't think. I uh, can't think to do the code or even talk, apparently. So anyways, okay, let's start. We've already got a few things that we've grabbed from the uh, interwebs. One is obviously all the art that we may or may not use. This is all from Kenny.nl. And then uh, we have the game event listener system, which we will probably use at some point. And this is pretty cool. We're going to give this a solid four stars for now. <clears throat> no, never mind. That cello or whatever is sweet. Okay, so first things first, we need a character of some kind. 1920 by 1080 is definitely what we're going to be working with. Uh, let's see, what kind of art do we have for sprites? And tile, please. Twenty-eight by what? Sixteen. Awesome. Now we've got our uh, background. Literally. That's pretty cool. Okay. And then next, we need to have our character because obviously you need to be able to control something. Uh, circles actually pretty accurate to what the final art's gonna look like. And if we end up enjoying this today, tomorrow, I might draw my own instead of using Kenny's. Um, ooh, there's a robot. Hmm, tempting. Tempting. I don't know, there's something funny about uh, using a zombie. So we'll start with a zombie that just has a gun. And then we need to create our enemy unit. Oh, that food was good, but always makes me burp. Eh? Which is great for streams, you know? Okay, so then next we need some kind of enemy. Uh, given the name of it, I think the old man is pretty funny. All right. So let's see, we're gonna first take care of 
the enemy. Enemies. And we've got the old man. We'll just make an enemy class and open that up. And we need this to do uh, a few things. Uh, we also need to make a player class. Oh man, I always get so so stressed out when it pauses for a moment. Cause I'm like, are you gonna are you gonna come back? Okay, so whoops, we do not need a player quit handler. Oh, this is good. What is this? Hmm. When the music's so good, it distracts you. Ooh, kind of forgot. I, uh, I forgot. Oh, did that mess up the... Yeah, it did. Okay. I forgot, uh, how good the music was in that. The thing about Bloodborne for me is that... The gameplay actually, like kind of frustrating at the start like it's hard to describe there's so much grinding to get uh, enough healing items but obviously you know if you're god tier and nothing's hitting you and you get every counter then it doesn't really matter yeah but there's normal people that play these games too i'm one of them actually i used to initially spite play them because uh people would always tell me like oh they're so amazing and if you had any, if I saw any sort of criticism about them online, they would, uh, the person, whoever criticized it, would just get absolutely murdered. Just everyone going after them, tell them how they're wrong and stupid and filthy casual and all that. And so I started spite playing them to prove that, like, any random schmuck could beat them. And I would actually go through and, and platinum these games. Because, it's like, if I can do it, I feel like anyone can do it. And every time I would beat one, and I'd see people trying to be all snarky and stuff, especially on Destructoid, I would just remind them, like, hey, I've beaten it, so you, you don't have a leg to stand on, really. Okay, so what we're doing here is we are assigning the, uh... The player, this is obviously, you know, kind of tacky, especially because when we, um, when we go to have these things spawning constantly, they're all going to be doing this on their startup, though we could probably have it pool. So, you know. Anyways, what we want to do, so we got transformed, uh, look at, I think, player, vector two, vector three dot forward? Let's find out. Okay, so what we're hoping will happen here is that it will... Ah, it's never... never right. Okay, let's try vector3.up. Oh, my God. Okay. No, so what angle is it pointing at? So it's currently the Y, but we actually need it to be the X? No, we need it to be the Z. Yes, we need it to be the Z, okay. So vector three dot up is Y, forward is, so it should be forward, and did that didn't work? Oh, okay, interesting. Let's try vector 3 dot right. Because when when in doubt, choose the right option. Okay, so that didn't work. So let me double check this online. I must be missing something. 
right? 2D. Basically, I'm just getting, I'm picking the wrong. And then we can put a rigid body on the player. They will be kinematic. I should still be fine. Make this a trigger. And then inside the player. Private void on trigger. Enter 2D. Oh no, he touched me. Let that save. All right, so that works now. Private avoid uh, die. Private game events on player death. On player death that raise. Cool. Alright, so now we need to go into the player section, make an event. This will be used later, obviously. Not quite yet, but we will need it. And then similarly, we're going to have the on enemy death.
Okay. And then we need to make an enemy spawner. Actually, you know what? Let's take care of killing the enemy first. Private Void Die first. Obviously, we can make an interface for this, and we may in the future. Hot enemy death upgrade. And then we need to take care of projectiles. So we've got our... Sorry with the circle. Let's call that projectile. Nothing special there. Give it the old reset. Let's go look at what objects we have. Not that you can see, obviously, but I'm just glancing through, seeing if we've got... That's... Oh, that's got a gray... Because that's supposed to be, like, asphalt or something. Tempting. Hmm... That might be it, I think. Yeah. Whoops. Okay. So we got this. We'll put a circle collider on it. Make it a trigger. We can even make a script for it. Call it projectile. Make a folder for it. Drag that up into there. And then we need to go in and make some new tags. Oh, is that already a tag? It is, okay. Enemy. Projectile player. Oh, interesting. Got an error down here or something. Maybe it doesn't like underscores. Projectile enemy. Hmm. Oh, let's maybe rename these. Don't know. Looks like something may have just broken in general. Yeah, sure. But we'll save and reopen because I don't want to deal with that. In fact, the reason I got concerned there just literally happened. It locked up. So, at least we caught it early until instead of when we were actually doing much work. Let that reopen and go rate some Bloodborne music while we're at it. Okay, so we didn't lose much. We just lost the bullet. Let's go back. Enemy. I think it's because I had added player. No. Okay. So just don't do underscores, I guess. I'll make a note of that.
Interesting. Okay, there we go. Reset. Yeah, we do. Technically, you, you want it to be a little bit smaller because the human eye will make it seem like they touch too early, generally. And people get really frustrated by that. Okay, so now we got our projectile. We'll save the scene real quick. Uh, we've got all the scripts, all good. We'll drop this in so that it's now a prefab. And then we will attach the enemy. Is that? It is not. Oh, right, because it'll depend on who spawns it. Cool. All right, so we got a player, an enemy, and now we need to be able to fire projectiles. So we can actually create a new script, which is uh, just a projectile launcher kind of thing. otherwise known as a gun. And in fact, we may just might as well for funsies call the script gun. Oops. Move that up on the player. Give it a save, and then what is the gun going to do? Well, the gun is going to spawn bullets. Maybe. Yes, okay. So, the gun is going to have a pool that it's going to pull from. The lesser known uh, relative of dead pool, bullet pool. And we're gonna have, we don't need these actually. Uh, public void fire, er, uh, private void update actually. Wait, is it gonna fire every frame or, yeah? We'll see. Fire. That's a, that's a lot of firing. Hit, hit, flip. I get mouse button down. Get mouse Because we don't have a rate of fire yet. And then for firing, we're going to pull a bullet. Oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. Okay, so we're going to say uh, projectile. Projectile to shoot equals no for a moment here. If projectile to shoot equals no, we're going to, uh, I guess we need to have a projectile prefab also. And just to drive people nuts, we're also going to be using Link. How exciting. We're going to instantiate a uh, projectile. Projectile to shoot equals this. What am I forgetting? Oh, yeah. Alright, and then, yeah, that's true. They've truncated this since then. And then from there, we need to have the projectiles always move. What would that be? Just there, the equivalent of their forward, I guess. So they'll need to impart the rotation of their parent transform. So, uh, to let's go into that class real quick.
private rotation attorney public void set firing direction Rotation. This dot rotation equals rotation, and then uh, if rotation equals quaternion dot zero, I think, or is it identity? Well, I guess the object won't go any direction anyway. Yeah, don't worry about it. So that's fine. Transform. Uh, what is it? Hold on. Transform da uh, That would probably be on a scriptable object in a bit, but for now, it's going to be public in speed. And we'll make that like 0.01. It's going to be a flute. So we can test it out real quick. By going in here. Dragging one in. All right. So if we were to adjust this rotation by, say, 45 degrees, it's still going only to the right, which makes sense because that's literally what we told it to do. Is that... Hold on. Vector three direction equals rotation times perhaps. Let's try that. Okay, so that, that makes sense. So it needs to be right, I think. Right times the rotation. Hmm, beastie. All right, then we'll just uh, this one, 45 degrees, drop it in. Still didn't work. Uh, what if we do that? All right, it's... Setting, the firing direction is set in this function, not actually on start. Kind of forgot about that. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so, oh, why did our music stop? Uh, watchers apparently does not work. All right, so we'll go back in. Say 45 degrees. Whoops. Gotta be actually running. But still didn't, even though... Okay. So am I going to have to do another one of those direction minus things? Yeah, I think so. Okay, that's fine. I'm trying to reinvent the wheel here for some reason. 
So if we go back here, that's in there. Basically, this. That's a cute idea, but that's not what I want to do. I swear that's what I did earlier. The internet is telling me this should work, but. I am naturally skeptical. Mm, up might be it, potentially. Yeah, we'll try up. Okay, so that makes sense. And we go back to right. This is not local position that I need to be doing. What on earth is this thing? Pause. Oh. Oh, I'm rotating the wrong direction. I should be rotating Z. We went over this. Dag damn it. Did I hit, I hit another dead song? Huh? Must be something with the network. Well then, I have a plan. A backup plan, if you will. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Mm. When in doubt. So good. Yes, please do. You can't see this, but right now it's telling me that it's doing an application at reload, which is usually pretty stressful because that often is associated with it never coming back. Yeah, they really need to fix that. Supposedly, the whole point of the new system is that you wouldn't have this happen. But it's like, it seems to be that if you move too quickly between Visual Studio and your project, this will happen. All right. Uh, that is promising. Now, obviously the problem was we don't see the bullet. But we do see it going off 45 degrees. Oh, am I not doing time speed right now? No, I am. Oh, 
Oh, right. Okay, so... And then... We don't see it right now because... The Z level, perhaps? Uh, let's just put it a level above. There we go. Okay. And then if we were to switch it to 90 degrees... Yes! Awesome! Okay. So that's done. All right. And then firing direction will be based off of the character firing it. And so I think... We were, we were about to do a whole bunch of work for no real reason. That happens. More than it should. Uh, all right. So now we have the bullet. We need to set the tag. Private. String, I think. Uh, or... Let's see here. Transform.tag equals testing. Okay, so we can set them at runtime, that's good. We don't need this here, we can actually... Private string projectile tag. And even this is just for debugging, we don't need it to be on all the time. And if we go look at the player, for their tag, we want it to be player projectile. Go in here. And then back to this. So, find projectile where projectile dot game object dot is uh, active, active self is fine. Tiles, add, whoop. bullet pool, dot add. And then projectile, to shoot, dot, set. Firing direction should equal transform dot rotation. So as the player turns and you fire, they will um, go in that direction. And we can actually take this for now, copy it in here. And we're not actually going to be looking for transform in this regard. This is actually fine. Oh, did I get that backwards? The annotations for noble reference types can only be used in code with a noble annotations context. Oh, yeah, I guess I get what they mean. Okay, we won't do that. That's fine. Over here, we can just get rid of this because, oh, yeah, that makes sense. If we just make this a position, target, transform dot position, and then down here, We've got, this should be target. So we take the player's transform, we minus it, from, or minus our own from it, and all this should still be right. And if we take this same code, bring it over here, then we can do a private void update 
um, what is it? Uh, camera dot main dot screen to world point vector three dot mouse or sorry uh, input dot mouse position look at that I can't imagine this will work I have a feeling that because the mouse position is going to be on a different Z axis or something oh Hey, law man. I didn't. <laughs> Sorry, I had a window over that. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Also, hey, it didn't even tell me that you sent. You did that either. Like, I didn't get a notification. Hmm. Very rude. I'm gonna have to check my notifications later. All right. So now. Our player is... Yeah, okay. So they are looking at the direction that you're pointing. Perfect. Yeah, I've just got too many windows open. I'm casual hour. All right, so now that's working. So then for gun... We need to go in and make sure that's all hooked up. It is... And then on mouse button down, or on mouse button, it should fire. So, let's see. Well, it did fire a bullet. Oh, let's see, where is it? Ah, right, 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 okay. We want the bullets to be over everything else. Okay, so the bullet's firing in the direction we're pointing. And we're actually looking for a bullet that is inactive. Okay, so they are always going 90 degrees, or 45 degrees, which makes sense because that is what their default was, which tells me I'm not setting their direction. Let's see what value's passing through here. Yeah, I hope life's been treating you well. I know you sound busy often. Did I already hit the breakpoint? go. So the rotation, that is indeed supposed to be my rotation. So we go over. Yes, okay. mouse button down just so it's less spammy okay so as we can see the player is not or the bullets are not going in the right angle based off their out the rotation. Let's see if it's even setting it correctly. So that one's got its rotation set at 88. No, it's not. Okay. Because I'm being an idiot here. So transform dot rotation equals rotation. That'll do it. And so we don't even need this. 
Like, maybe we'll add it back later, but... Alright. Now we can shoot in every direction. Cool. And then, for the projectiles, we're gonna say... If... It is visible? Main that is visible. Or is that under sprite render? Let's see. Get component sprite render visible. Yes, okay. Sprite renderer. Private. Void start. Okay. And then we'll say if s renderer dot is visible is not true, we need to private void pool. And this is going to be transformed at set active, or actually game object dot set active is false. Okay, so now when the bullets are off screen, they'll get pooled. And then we need them to pool when they hit the opponent. So one thing we need to do here is projectile to shoot dot tag equals tag. That way when we set up the uh, physics for what the bullet should be able to hit, the player's bullets won't hit themselves and then the enemy bullets won't hit other enemies. Although that would be hilarious, because then it'd be a cascade. And let's see here. Uh, I think that's everything. Obviously, we'll need to adjust the speed a bit. We'll see what feels good. Ah, and they need to be set active. Projectile to shoot dot set act, uh, game object dot set active is true. Their, their transform needs to be reset as well. Dot transform dot position equals transform dot position. So we're basically setting them to the position of the player. It's weird. The bullets on my screen, it almost looks like they've got a weird trail to them. Like they're speed is off a bit. Let's see. Uh, let's try that. Try and smooth it out over the frames. We'll try it at one first and then go down from there. Okay, that looks a lot better. Yeah, it looks real good. What about three? And you can see on my screen here, uh, the bullets, they turn off or quote unquote pool whenever uh, they're off screen and no longer visible. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that looks amazing. Well, amazing might be a strong word, but Okay, so now we need to set up the enemy to die when it gets hit by a bullet. And the way to do that is we're going to go into the project settings. And physics 2D. And down here... Ah, it's layers that we need to do, not tags. Alright, that's fine. Add layer. Player, enemy, player, bullet, enemy, bullet. Bullet. 
Oh, okay, we're fine. All right. So then we'll go in here, player, enemy. And like I say, now you'll see down here, uh, uh, let's turn this off real quick so you can actually see it easier. Whoops, wrong one. You can do it. There you go. So we're just going to go through, we're going to turn off all this nonsense. I wish you could just, like, hold a button and... Because we have a very precise series of things that should happen here. We want the player bullet to be able to hit the enemy. And then we want the player to be able to hit with the enemy bullet, as well as the enemy. Enemies should not collide with each other. And then... The bullets, uh, for now we won't have them collide with each other, but maybe that'll be fun. And they shouldn't collide with themselves, and that's it. So there's only three interactions. You've got player enemy bullets, you've got enemy player bullets, and player and enemy, so that if the enemy touches us, we die, obviously. And then if the bullet touches us, we die. So, you know, it's all fun. And instead of this string here... Stop complaining. Oh, if I said it to Noah, it's still gonna complain. Rude. We don't actually care. Can't do read only. Uh, maybe one of these days I'll take care of that. Okay, layer mask. Is it transformed uh, layer mask? No? Game object uh, layer mask. Layer? Okay. Layer mask. Oh my god. Typing is hard. Okay. So that takes care of that for us. And you can't even see anymore. There you go. So I did this right here. Alright, so now the we should be able to set up the bullets to actually hit the player. Or hit the enemy mob. So we'll, we'll test firing them real quick. It can only be in one layer. Are they not? Weird. Let's see here. Layer mask. Mask. Let's see. I'm just checking that there's not like a set that we need to do. Okay, so let's try that. Check them. And it says their layer is default. So let me check real quick. Ah, interesting. Okay. That's how you get the mask, but I don't see you actually assigning it to anything. Hmm. 
let's try this again. Player bullet, save, go. No, that throws it off. If we set it to nothing, no errors then. see if we can figure it out. If not, I'll just make two different prefabs. One player bullet, one enemy bullet. Not a big deal. Layer equals layer mask. Aim to layer. kind of weird, but... settings they are all there we don't uh actually can I see those nope I see, okay. Uh oh, we made it mad. So we're just gonna pull this in. It'll be a prefab variant. Because we don't got time for this. Player. And for the enemy one, we'll set it to enemy bullet. For the player one, we'll set it to player bullet. I'll go into the gun class and we'll just leave it at that, I guess. So strange. So now, when the bullet hits something, uh, this does mean that the projectile needs a rigid body, I believe. Otherwise, it won't uh, collide with things. Kinematic. Void on trigger, enter 2D. Don't need this anymore. Uh, collision dot get component. Obviously, this is why we need to make those abstracts or whatever. But uh, for now, we'll just do this to test it. Did I add anything to the enemy? Yeah, I did. Oh, it's private. That was dumb. should actually be spawning player projectiles, which should not touch it.
Uh, but they're not hitting the enemy either. We'll go back and check our project settings for collisions. Trigger is triggered. Okay. Okay, so that's not working. physics object, just like the player. What did I write? On trigger enter, on trigger enter. Oh! On the wrong object. Oopsie doopsie. That's what happens when you're doing this stuff late at night. Okay, so they're not connecting, but that's less alarming now because I actually put it on the right object. They do have a physics body. Okay, so it did trigger for enemy on player. Enemy player bullet should work. That's enemy. Got their circle collider. Is it just because they don't have a rigid body on them? Stop falling. Nerd. Okay. up again. So frustrating. At least it's a small project. Right, right, right. 
okay, so set this to one, set that to one. Projectiles can be both at two. Or actually, let's set the projectiles at one and these two at two. Okay. Okay, so our question was we put a rigid body 2D on this, set it to kinematic. Oh, is it just not able to do rotation if it's kinematic? That seems awfully weird. Because you notice how it locked up at the exact same point again. That's fascinating. Well, we won't do that then. Actually, I'm going to try... Oh, now it's on it. We're just going to turn off the enemy script real quick. Do a bit of science. So they still don't hit. Interesting. Okay, and we know that they will hit if they touch the player. So... What am I missing here? It's always a weird feeling. I guess we'll come back to that in a moment, and, let, and I'll think about it while we put in player controls. Uh, let's see here. And we'll just uh, make it easy. If input dot get ma uh, get keyboard get key down or get key yeah key code dot w if input dot get key key code dot a if input dot get key key code dot S if input dot get key key code dot D private float speed vector to uh, int direction equals vector two dot zero Direction plus equals uh, vector two int dot le up direction plus equals 
vector to int dot left int dot down to int dot right. So then if you want to press multiple buttons you can and it'll just add them all up. Int transform dot position plus equals direction times speed times time dot delta time. Uh, that's fair. Oh, no, I'm still gonna complain. There you go. I guess, even if we don't need Z, I know I could fix some code at the bottom there, but... We can now move around. Cool. And then the next thing we'll do real quick while we're working on this. Public void move towards Transform target towards this. Is that not a no. vector three. we're doing this is because we are probably going to put this on the enemy as well. Private transform target. Nah, we'll just do lazy town way. want to split that up given how little is going on in there. We won't. So we're just gonna say private void move towards private or move towards player? Or does it want to transform? Target. And then this would be basically this same thing. You take the direction. And then you say transform dot position uh, vector three dot right times time dot delta time. I think that's what we established. So now, no matter where I move, huh, whoops, did it backwards. So now, no matter where I move, oh, no, he's still not following me. Did I just do that in the wrong thing? No. Oh, I didn't include this.
All right, so now he follows me. Ugh, leave me alone. And obviously, we want to make them a little bit faster than us. Private float speed. In fact, I almost want to make our speed, uh... Get component, uh, movement, speed, times 1.1. So they're just slightly, slightly faster than the player, so you won't be able to run away from them no matter what we set the player speed to. Okay, so now we can go back and we might as well work on the next part because uh, I at least like to get that done tonight and then tomorrow we might do the last bit because we got started later than expected, but it was a very productive day, so I do not, do not regret it the slightest. Uh, seven seems good. And you'll understand what I'm doing here in a moment. I'm avoiding math if I can help it. That is zero. What? Oh! Interesting. I see what happened there. I'll say, why is it not lining up? Seven, uh, scale. Nineteen, eighteen, eighteen. Uh, box collider two D, please. Then we're gonna make another one. Making sure it's right. And this one's going to be at negative seven. And we're going to make yet another one. Zero it out. Turn it 90 degrees. Negative 20. Nope. We have 12, probably. And we're going to make this one smaller. Spawn another one, make that positive 12. Top spawner, bottom spawner, left spawner, right spawner. And then we're gonna go in here and make our spawner is going to be hopefully pretty fast. But we just need a private list uh, of box colliders. Serialize that list. Private float spawn time equals, uh, let's say five seconds. And then private float time since last spawn equals zero. And we'll serialize this. On update time since last spawn, we'll go up by time but delta time, right? And then if time since last spawn is greater than or equal to spawn time, we will call the function spawn. And set time since last spawn to zero. And then in the spawn section, we need to spawn something. I know, wild, right? And so then down here, we're going to instantiate 
enemy. Uh, enemy. Enemy equals this. There we go. Enemy is to spawn. And we could, I think you can do like position. So let's uh, work on that position first, right? Uh, spawner index equals random dot range zero uh, spawner dot count plus one because it is since it's integers it is not including the um, upper bounds oh wait actually no that's fine in an array because it starts at zero we're good brain wasn't all there so if the count is four, it'll start at, z at zero and go to three. And then we need to uh, vector three position equals um, spawners, spawner index dot get Let's see here. Basically, I'm going to grab a random point. And I'm going to have it spawn uh, in that random point. Alright. Well, I'm just going to... Interesting. Hold on. I'm curious about this. Does that really work? Interesting. Hmm. I'll be very curious to see this work. What's that work out to? Okay, so we'll start this. <coughs> Oops, excuse me. Random point. And then. Uh, position. Brain. So basically, what we do is plus new vector three. That position equals. Then we'll be highly skeptical, but we'll go try it. I guess five seconds was a long... Oh, wow. Well, that did work on that one. Okay. Wait, is it always coming from the zero position? Let's see. 
Looks like it might be. Maybe not? Well, we can make this really obvious. Yeah, it's always coming from the centers, it looks like. Okay, so we'll do it differently. I like the other solution I saw anyways. Which was... this. So we'll just go with um, box collider 2D collider equals this. Vector 3 versus vector 2. Does that break anything else? Okay, we'll just make it a vector 2. New vector 2. Okay. And then new vector 3. Random pass x, random pass y, and 0. So let's try this one. Basically, they're taking a random position within the... Still all coming from the center. That's a lot of old people. Terrifying. So if we come in and look at this top spawner and glance at the collider. Whoa! It does appear to be the right size. So then if we come back in here. Debug.log, random pass x, random y. Excuse me. Here I am doing math, anyways. Heaven help us. So those are. Oh, we're not actually setting it, are we? No, we are. But it's always coming from the center. And the enemy to spawn, the transform position is being set here. It does make sense, actually. It does look like... It does look like they're... Yeah. No, this... This actually is making sense to me. So I'll explain it real quick. When I look at their random positions down here, you'll notice that the offset, so when you think of, like, where it's randomly picking, it looks like it's always almost dead center. Which is interesting because usually this works or something along these lines works.
Uh, were we using bounds before? We were not. Let's try that. Oh! Thank you! And welcome! Oh, yay, my little emote thing works. Cool. That is quite the username. So, whoops, let's see here. Do we need that? Oh, not necessarily. I should throw an air at some point here. Yep. Not too bad. How's it going for you? Hopefully well, I imagine. Just trying to get a few things working, and they are being somewhat stubborn. As is often the way. There we go. And then if we just go in... Huh. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, that's just horrifying. Okay. So now our spawners are done. Casual observation. Uh, let's see, this should fix it. Okay, good. So now the old people do touch. Touch the player. Give them the big scares. Okay, so spawning's done, shooting's done. What we need to fix is why these bullets aren't hitting the old characters. Right now we're going to just say... Enemy is trigger. Player is not. Projectile is not. I don't know why this would be the case, but you know what? We're going to check. <laughs> and if it is, whatever. It is. Okay. The why to that. Okay, so... Can two things that are trigger not hit each other? That may be the case. Okay, well, I guess this is how we're doing it. I'll think about that later and figure out why it happened like that. So, if collision dot tag or... Yeah, tag's fine. Uh, tag dot contains... Uh, we could just grab the whole line, I guess. Copy and paste that? We can't. Fantastic. Projectile player. Debug. Uh, or actually, just die. It's fine. Nice and dark. And then... Game object dot... That active to false. So let's give it a shot. Cool. The bullet didn't get consumed though. So we should probably do that. False.
Okay. Who wants it? Huh? Okay, all the enemy clones are being spawned, deactivated, I see. Which tells me that the prefab has been edited, perhaps? Oh no, we haven't even made a prefab. Ah, ah, okay. That's exactly the problem. There we go. That should fix it. Okay, so we need to fix the speed of the, the people. Because what's happening is they are going faster depending on how close they are to me. So if we go look at their code, move towards its uh, a direction. Should it be normalized? Normalized. Let's see if that fixes it. Yes. Awesome. Ah, I like when fixes happen easily. Nice. Okay. So, yeah, I think we'll probably cut it off here. And then tomorrow, we'll go through, if not tomorrow, next Saturday, we'll see how it goes. Uh, we'll go through and take care of basically having difficulties, like having it slowly increase the speed that they spawn at. Have a timer at the top for how long you've survived. Then we'll have the, when they, when they die, have them fire out bullets. It's probably going to be, I'm thinking, a set of four bullets in random angles. Something like that. And obviously if you get hit by those, you die, so. Cool. And then for the for the enemies, let's really quick with this enemy spawner. Let's actually get it pooling. Private list. Enemy. Enemy. Cool. And we're going to say uh, enemy to spawn equals enemy pool dot find enemy where enemy dot uh, game object dot active self. And then we're going to say wherever that's not true. If enemy to spawn is no, then enemy to spawn equals, uh, uh, make a new one. And then enemy pool dot add enemy to spawn. And yeah, that should do it. And now we shouldn't see a million of them in an ever increasing list. We should just see them uh, spawn however many we need. Now we spawned one, two, three. Okay, so they're coming in, so we're gonna hit one. We should see that one turn back on. Oh, we gotta actually set it back on as active. True. And maybe tomorrow we'll make a generic pooling uh, class so that we can just start using that in all of our future projects. So you hit, see we hit one, so now it turned back on, it's being used again. And I'm thinking for bullets, perhaps, when the pool of bullets hits, say, 10, we'll have a, a max shots kind of thing. Private int max shots, max live shots equals, we'll say, 10. And then, uh, when you go to fire, 
few ways we could do this, really. One is to just increment and decrement current count. But that wouldn't work because we don't pool the bullets currently when they get hit. We are... So yeah, let's just do this way. Oh yeah, this makes the most sense actually. If it is null and uh, bullet pool dot count is less than max shot. What, what, what word did we use? Max live shots. So if the count is 10 and your, or the count is nine, nine is less than 10 and it'll make another one which will bring it up to 10. So yeah, it should work. Just so it doesn't get out of control with people shooting, you know? Uh, ooh. Yes, this makes sense. Thinky, 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 thinky. Debug.log. So basically, once you... And, and I can adjust this code later so that it doesn't even try to make a new one once it gets to a certain point. This is all just sort of hamstrung together, you know, to... Whoops. Max life shots is 10... Not that it should ever be uh, greater than, but there we go. Yeah, I like that. So now you got to think a little bit harder, you know? And then you can do that thing in games where if you're near the edge, you can shoot way faster because your bullets recover faster, you know? And what we'll actually do in the end probably is have some kind of ammo count and then maybe guns will appear on the screen or something. I don't know. We'll try not to overthink it, but... I just know there's some assets that could be used. Oh. Yeah, I like this. Cool. Okay. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Uh, we'll see how tomorrow goes and... If it goes well, maybe even early in the day, we'll we'll do a quick rundown of finishing up some more of this and maybe take a moment to make some fun classes that we can use in future projects without needing to keep rewriting them, which will speed up any future micro projects that we do. So yeah, if you watched here, thanks for watching here. Uh, if you end up seeing this on YouTube at some point, thanks for watching there and I uh, hope you have a nice day, night, whatever it be for you. Bye.